guys, David here. Today is June 23rd, 2022, and this is my 2013 Mustang GT that today I bought 10 years ago. That's right, feel old yet? I bought this car 10 years ago up in Richmond, Virginia, where I used to live. And wow, what a freaking journey it has been. It comes to memories and crazy things that happened. I was gonna drive it around, but Smurf doesn't start and I cannot figure it out. And unfortunately with it, it's an electrical issue because I was coming back from a car event a few months ago and I had just changed the alternator on this to a more beefy alternator because I was getting electrical codes and then the charging system completely failed on the way home. I barely, barely made it home. I had actually pushed this car into the garage with some friends up a hill. It was not fun. So I am really bummed that that's how it is today with the 10 year anniversary, but at least I still got it. <laughs> I'm also wearing the hat from 10 years ago in my first car review and also my second car review, my 2013 Mustang GT. But mechanically, the car is absolutely fine. That's what's almost frustrating. I almost wish that something mechanical was wrong. That way I could just know what it is and fix it. But that's not how electrical gremlins are. I even used a really, really great trickle charger. Let it charge overnight, nothing. I tried the startup mode, nothing. So there is something in the harness or something along those lines that just isn't working. And that is why with today's video, I just wanna have a chill talk about this thing, how this car has absolutely changed and affected my life in literally every way and how material things don't really grant you happiness, but they can help you on the journey sometimes to get there to get the fulfillment that you need. Smurf has been almost a part of my identity for all of these years, and I'm so excited to kind of walk through some of these stories. So let's go ahead and get started. In 2012, I had a black Mustang GT that I ended up trading for the 2013 Mustang GT, and I was so sad at first. Well, this is the last time I see this black Mustang and trading it for that thing over there. Goodbye, black pony. Because I had so many sentimental memories of the black Mustang, but it was completely worth it. But waiting at my house was already a Roush axle back, and I put it on the same day I got the car. <laughs> this four-way steering prelude so I went for a drive to kind of test out the Roush axle back see how it sounded and at the same time see if I could get away from him and on the straight lines it was no contest and I started to kind of be like okay it was definitely worth getting this car even though it was a live axle car you could still get around the corners fairly well at least in that day and age and at the time I was more so a freelance videographer so my first road trip was all the way down to Florida to film this thing for a Kickstarter. But I ended up visiting my uncle who was super into cars, uh, but I got pulled over my very first time in Smurf, literally less than a month of ownership because I was driving across this bridge in St. Augustine. I can't remember which bridge it was, but then I go over it and there's this white Suburban behind me and it's an older Suburban, so I don't really think anything of it. And I look over at my uncle and my uncle goes, you gonna get on it? I said, yes. So I get on it right in front of this Suburban and lights me up instantaneously. And I am like, I am so screwed. I am so screwed. I was top of like fourth gear, which is way up there. He pulls me over and he gets out. He's in a red polo and like khakis and he just has his badge on, right? And my uncle, Credit to him, saved the day. He was like, oh, it's just my nephew. Like, he's just showing me his new car, et cetera, et cetera. And we walked away just fine. I was really shook up. Like, this is before I got pulled over pretty much ever, other than a reckless driving ticket that I've told that story a million times. That was kind of my first initial like, okay, you have a bright blue car. This might be common. <laughs> then only a month later, I drove all the way to the Woodward Dream Cruise in Detroit from Virginia to meet friends I had met 
on Forza Motorsport 4. Yeah, um, maybe I should have thought that through a little bit, but I was young and dumb, and these guys ended up being incredible people. And it was kind of cool to be in this internet age of like meeting people and having a common thing to be, you know, in love with and then just hang out over it around amazing cars. And on the way back from Woodward was when I had my first um, encounter. It was with an Evo 9. He got next to me and just smiles, like the biggest grin on earth, along with his passenger. They're just like, and they're next to me and they're brake boosting. And I'm like, ugh, fine. From a 60, it wasn't an issue at all. From a 40, it was door to door and he finally had an edge on me. The guy was super cool. His car ended up making like 400 horsepower. So it ended up being like, oh my God, even stock, this car is fast. In my three valve, there's no way it could have taken on a Bolt-On or a bigger turbo Evo. There's no way. And that's when I was like, don't get in trouble. <laughs> to see how much better the Coyote was to the three valve. I also shot my first ever vlogs inside Smurf and basically the vlogs ended up being kind of like rants or therapy, <laughs> talking to my audience about what I was going through or what was going on in my life. I like your car. Thank you. Thanks for checking out my daily vlogs again and uh, I'm gonna enjoy my nuggets now. And that was kind of at the time to feed the YouTube algorithm to be like, look, I'm posting, look, I'm posting. Never got crazy big viewership, but the audience that would go on those videos was just so dear to my heart because they were there to just listen to me and that felt incredible. And not in like a narcissistic way, it just meant I was appreciating people stopping by just to see me driving around aimlessly. You think I had a destination in those videos? Not really, most of the time it was me to go get lunch. Like I was just editing another video and I was like, I might as well film a vlog while I go get lunch or go get dinner or something like that. That's why there's so many drive-through clips in Smurf. Hello, how, how you doing? doing? I'm good, how are you? Good. Pretty little car you got. Thank you. Pretty little car? Ah, oh, that makes me sad. I'm down at Mount Trashmore Skate Park and I get an email from Late Model Restoration who said, hey, would you like to review our wheels? I mean, I get, I have to buy them obviously and I did not have the money to buy wheels at the time. Like I had the car payment and the gas and food. Like that's all I had because I was living with my parents because I wanted to have this YouTube dream. So that's what I was investing in. But they were like, no, like we're sponsoring you. And that was my first ever sponsor in Smurf. And I was in the car replying through the email and I was like kind of on the verge of tears because I was like, I'm doing something. Like I'm actually doing something and making something work, right? I still hadn't really taken off yet, but it was showing I was going in the right direction. And this also taught me the ropes of how to review cars and how to, you know, review parts or install parts or do install videos. Like, thankfully they gave me that opportunity when they gave me the aesthetic stuff, like the wing and the diffuser and all that kind of stuff. And that taught me how to film install videos and try to make them entertaining. <laughs> But driving Smurf and showing that I could handle Smurf when it had the bolt-ons on it, it ended up making around 425 wheel horsepower and 93 octane with some bolt-ons. That's when people started opening the door for me to review other cars. So with Smurf so far, I've learned how to drive a faster car. I've already had great road trips in it. I've met great people along the way and I got my first sponsorship and my vlog series, it was always there for me. I had to pretty much thank this car for so much already and it's only been a year or two of doing YouTube full time. The reason I segue to this is that I met a guy named Brett who let me review his Helion Turbo three valve Mustang which made a little bit over 500 horsepower. He was like, oh, if you can handle this, you can handle that. And that was the very first car review that I did my musical intros that so many people know me for nowadays. And that's how I got my formula, was because I went from Smurf to this Helion car, 
And then by doing the Helion car, it opened the door to so much more. And then it opened the door to things like Jasmine a month later. Also in 2013, I went up to Pittsburgh to meet up with Subaru WRX fan, who is now Matt Moran Motoring, and that was my first YouTube collab. So I did my first YouTube collab in Smurf as well, and we traded cars. I drove his BRZ, and he drove Smurf, which is so funny because I looked at the BRZ, and I'm glad at the time I didn't get the BRZ. It just wasn't a right fit for me. And that got me the opportunity to go to this thing called the Hangar Party, where I hung out with a guy named Dr. M3, who is my first experience around exotic cars pretty much ever. So, but then in March of 2014, I went to the 50th anniversary of the Mustang. It was cold and rainy, and I went up to the RTR booth where Vaughn was and Ryan Turek was, and I got a picture with them and said hello and et cetera, et cetera. But I was like, you know, that was cool, but maybe I'll get to work with them someday. This monster girl in like a, you know, tank top or whatever it was, it, it was freezing outside. That's all I can tell you. And so I go up to her and I'm like, dude, you look freezing. Do you want a jacket or anything? And just by being nice and genuine, and that was actually genuine, we started talking, it went off without a hitch, and then she gave me an invitation to the after party. You could probably tell I'm not a bar person whatsoever. I know, it's so shocking. But I was in my hotel, I was by myself, I didn't have anyone else to go with, but I went anyway. And I showed up in Smurf, pulled up to this bar in downtown Charlotte, came out, sat down at an empty table, and right across from me, Vaughn sits down. And I'm sitting next to my buddy, Rob Raybon, who also came up, who had the unicorn Mustang at the time. Me and Vaughn start talking, and he goes, yeah, I learned how to drift in this parking lot called Cloverleaf Mall. And I was like, that's where I learned how to drive manual. So, small world. We go outside, and he signs my car. I drive away from this bar and I am yelling in celebration going, I met someone who might help me down the road in my career. And at the same time, it was just a cool feeling. I got a signature and driving away. It was so funny now was that if I see him at an event, I just say hello, just like any other event. But at the time, that was a huge deal for me. I then went to a Mustang Club meetup in Kentucky and we went on my first mountain drive in Smurf where I had an absolute ball and just got to know other people who own the same car. created a sense of community. So Smurf opened the door for me to be that guy who drives the blue Mustang, but he also drives other people's cars. That's, that's how I was known. I'm stuttering because so much happened, right? But then in 2015, I kind of pushed Smurf off to the side a little bit to do the 240SX project because all of my effort was going into the 240SX project. And it was so funny, all the comments saying like, Smurf's jealous that you're cheating on it. You know, everyone kind of missed Smurf. And I noticed that, that there was a connection to my audience with this car and me, because it was essentially my mascot. But if you fast forward to the end of 2015, that's when I finally boosted a car my first time because I pro-charged Smurf. And that was a monumental moment for me. It was my first time boosting a car. And at the same time, I felt like I had really made it. Right, I felt like I had finally done the things I wanted to do with Smurf. Because I always dreamed about boosting a car, but I could never afford it and I could never really achieve it, right? And Pro Charger at the time was awesome. They really helped out with a sponsorship and that was it. So then Smurf made over 630 horsepower and it was awesome. <laughs> But 2016 is where things really changed with me and Smurf. I moved to Atlanta in 2016, and unfortunately, I was broken up with somebody who lived here. She was seeing someone else when I didn't know. And so I moved down here, and I pretty much knew nobody. I moved into this house by myself. It was just a rental home. And I'm driving around town just to kind of understand my new home and my new surroundings and it's me and Smurf, right? Smurf, this non-sentient mechanical thing. 
is pretty much my only friend. And I know that sounds very strange. I don't mean that in a weird way, but you know, it's it's me and my OG. You know, I'm driving around town and I'm like, it's okay, buddy. Like, you've always comforted me in the past because this is my car. It's the car. Then about two weeks later, I never elaborated on this due to legal issues back in the day, but I briefly touch upon it in a video called I Really Screwed Up, which is every bad thing that happened in the first month of me moving to Atlanta, and it was absolutely nuts. It was like the entire universe was saying, leave this town. I parked Smurf in the garage. I couldn't sleep because I was depressed because of the breakup. I was up till about three in the morning, and basically I'm laying in bed, and all of a sudden I hear, like it sounded like my drawers in my kitchen had opened and slammed itself, right? I was like, is there a freaking ghost in here? Well, lo and behold, two months later, I never noticed it because I would get in Smurf, open the garage, pull out and drive away from the house. But there was holes in my garage door. Well, what had happened was is down the street, there was a confrontation of somebody who was, had been drinking, came to his ex-girlfriend's house, got angry, pulled out, demonetization, demonetization randomly all over the place and every single round hit my house. So basically the rounds went right over Smurf, right over my water heater, right over the guest room, went all the way through the closet. So if I had a roommate, they could have been hurt. It was the first crime in that area like that in like decades, apparently. But essentially, I didn't know exactly what happened at the time, but the guy was arrested and everything else. It was just some random guy, random chance hitting mine. It wasn't a targeted thing. Just wanna make that very clear. But then also in 2016, with the growing pains of moving to Atlanta, that's when I had the first problems with the car. I got a check engine light because my header gasket was leaking, probably because of the Pro Charger and it was factory exhaust. I couldn't pass emissions, I couldn't get registration. It was just a hot mess. But through all these hardships, through all of my life, this past 10 years of emotional hardships and mechanical hardships and project cars and all this stuff, Smurf has always been the constant especially when it almost got totaled when I got hit by a Penske truck. Another vehicle decides, wow, I would like a taste of the Mustang too. Isn't life so funny? What were you thinking? And that's when I thought my journey was over with Smurf, but thankfully Chris Tress at the time repaired it and fixed it. Thank God I was okay. Smurf saved me because it was like a really, really hard hit and I'm thankful I'm okay. And then to kind of pay it back, you know, I repainted it this beautiful nitrous blue. I gave it a pretty roof and wing, and we got the VMP supercharger on it, make it 700 wheel. Like I said earlier in this video, it's, um, it's kind of a paperweight, <laughs> which is really sad. And I'm so sorry that I didn't get to drive it for this anniversary video, but I just didn't want to miss this anniversary. I just wanted to share to you guys how much you guys mean to me and how much my viewers have stuck by me with all my crazy ups and downs. And Smurf has also been that constant along with my OG viewers. Without Smurf, I wouldn't have everything that I have. I wouldn't have this office that I have every day now to drive to so I don't have to go crazy working from home for another 10 years. I met my fiance in Smurf. Right, like so many amazing things happened in this car. And I just wanna make this clear one more time. Material things don't make you happy. They just don't, no matter how cool the car is. But they can make great memories. They can create great opportunities sometimes. And at the same time, everybody has that special car they can't let go. And that one especially, even though I've kept every single one of my project cars because I'm an idiot and hoard everything, that one, that one's staying for good. Guys, my question to you is, what was the first time you ever saw Smurf or the very first time you saw one of my videos ever? Please leave in the comment section below. I've had a great time kind of talking and reminiscing during this video. I know it was very chill and not much happened, but thank you all so much for just being there for me and understanding everything I go through. That's all I got to say about that. And on that note, I upload on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, and I will see you guys next time. Take it easy. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.